This time on Low Boost, we're gonna install some Johnny O'Connell adjustable sway bars on our C5 Corvette. One of the things I really like about driving a stock car around the track is really getting to see what the car lacks and what it needs. Now I did do some minor stuff like brake lines, tires, and pads uh, for the C5 Corvette, but after driving it at the track, I really knew what it needed and it had a lot of body roll. So it needed to be a little bit stiffer. And the next thing I needed to get for this car were sway bars. So I got some Johnny O'Connell adjustable sway bars we're gonna install on the C5 today, so hopefully I'm gonna to get to use them at the track the next time I go at Lime Rock. I put a link in the description below to these Johnny O'Connell sway bars. So that's how they came in the box. We'll measure up the size of these comparatively to the old ones, but they are considerably thicker. They also come with um, bushings, and they also have bushing grease to get you started so you don't get all the squeaks. And they also come with adjustable end links as well. Really high quality stuff. Now this isn't really a big, big operation. You can take these off relatively easily, um, but you have to get to these, which if you can get access with an impact gun, if you already have the wheel off, you can do it, or you can use an 18 millimeter with an Allen key to get them off. But those are the stock end links. You really just turn one one way and one the other, and it comes off relatively easily. Hard to do holding the camera though, so I'm gonna put it down. Next, you're gonna to wanna to remove these two on that side and this and that side over there, uh, holding the bushings on. This thing basically falls right the F out. I'm just gonna make sure your end links are pushed out and then everything should come right out. All right, so here is some reasoning as to why I got a Corvette Coupe as opposed to getting a C5 Z06. Now, the Z51s and the Z06s have thicker sway bars. They do. They're thicker than the ones that are on this. However, the sway bars that I got are even thicker than those. So I was gonna upgrade them anyway to something even more aggressive, which is going to handle even better. Now take a look. This is the stock sway bar that comes on a C5 Coupe non-Z51. And this is a Johnny O'Connell sway bar. You can see it is almost double the size. Now, what this does is when you go around a turn, on this side of the car, this sway bar will move up. And in turn, it causes the other side of the car to move up and push the tire in closer. So th this reduces the body roll on the car as you're going around a turn. However, you're gonna still have body roll because this sway bar is actually going to flex one way this way and the other side this way because it's really not that stiff. But this one here, because it's a heck of a lot stiffer, isn't going to flex hardly at all. The end links that come on these are also adjustable and super high quality material. Um, you always good, it's always good to have them pointing down. That way any water or you know particles or materials can't actually get in and stay in. If you have it like this, that could happen. If it's, at least if it's this way, that's better. Um, and it also says that in the instructions to install it that way. You also don't want to forget to grease the area where the bushings are because um, they're going to squeak like a mother if you don't. And also you want to make sure you install them the same way the other ones are. So this is nice and greased up now. We'll do the other side. That one goes this way and the top piece goes that way to make everything work. It's all in by hand. And then I'm going to tighten these down. I may use a washer because it's, it's really a tight fit um, with the bushing there. But same thing on that side as well. So we'll tighten everything down and see how it looks. So to tighten them, I actually used a long extension to get on that 18 millimeter nut on that side. And then I just dropped in a 
17. I don't know if you can see it. There. 17 over top of here to hold it in place while I tighten it down. All right, so now we move on to the back of the car. So we just got to undo these two, the end links, and over there as well. Into the end links being adjustable in the front. The, uh, the, the rear sway bar actually has adjustable points to adjust the stiffness. So if you want it to be more oversteer happy or understeer happy, you can adjust it this way. So I want the car to be as balanced as possible. I have square set up 275s all the way around. I don't want it to understeer. I don't want it to oversteer. I want it to be balanced. So I'm gonna put it in the middle setting to try it out. And then I could adjust things as I go. The rear of the car is easier to adjust the sway bars in the front. So we're gonna save all the tunability for the rear. Bearings are greased up, end links are on. We're gonna slap it on there. And everything down while it has preload and they recommend doing it on a four post lift. I don't have one. So I'm just giving it a little bit with the floor jack on each side. See if that does the trick. It uh. I like the yellow matching the yellow. It's pretty cool. But we're going to see how these things really behave real soon. I'll let you guys know. Now, doing these install videos is great. And I really appreciate you guys watching because I know a lot of people do videos like this. But I do want to offer you guys something more than what just some people say about, oh, I put the part on and I drove it on the street and it feels better. You really can't tell on the street how any of this stuff does. You actually have to drive it on a track. So I'm going to give you guys my track experience with all of the parts that I put on this car. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all my uploads and all my track experience with all the parts that I'm putting on my car for you guys. The car is as sorted as it's gonna be for my track day. I put a new power steering pump on, I did a power steering cooler below, and, and I did a catch can. And you guys can check out all these videos that I do on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description below to the main channel. But now that I have the, the sway bars on, I really want to see what this thing is going to do at the track. It was leaning hard at New York Safety Track. I'm going to get to try it out at Lime Rock next, and uh, I'll be heading back to New York Safety Track on July 30th, which I'm sponsoring that event for Heinlein Motorsports. It's going to be 275 bucks if you guys use my coupon code LOWBOOST25. You'll get $25 off that track day, normally 300 bucks, now 275 for a full day of riding. There's not going to be a whole lot of cars there for social distancing for social distancing purposes, but also for more open track time. So make sure you guys check out that event at New York Safety Track, July 30th. With these Johnny O'Connell sway bars, my turn in is fantastic. It's a there's a lot less body roll. Hopefully, we can get some pictures of it. Um, but I'm able to just put the car where I want it to, and really not have to worry about it pushing or anything. It really is turning in better than it, than it was before significantly, and I could still adjust it too. It's not oversteering, it's not understeering right now, so I'm kind of happy with with it where it's at. Little follow up from the C5 with the new sway bars. What I originally was expecting was for it to be a lot tighter, a lot stiffer, a lot firmer to help me get around the turns better. And it was. But one thing I didn't notice that it was going to happen was I actually got a lot more turn in. So when I used to drive the car, I'd get to a turn, come in hot. I would get to a certain point and then I would feel the car start to push and start to understeer. Uh, but now with the new sway bars, I had like I got to that point and then I realized a few laps in, I had even more turn in to go so I could take each turn that much harder and come in and turn tighter every turn. Now that might shave off a 10th or two tenths of a second a turn, but if you've got 19 turns on a course, that's a lot of time. It was significantly better. I really feel like this is now the best handling car I've ever had 
just by doing the sway bars and also the tunnel plate definitely helped stiffen things up as well. Now, I don't wanna adjust it to make it oversteer more or have them more turn in because then it could start getting tail happy. So I feel like for right now, I found a really good medium as to where I wanna have it all the way in on all the end lengths and the middle setting on the rear sway bar. Um, I felt like I had a lot more turn in, the back end didn't wanna kick out. I still modulate the pedal coming out of the turns, but I'm not stomping on it. But even in some of the times where I felt like I did, it didn't really kick out. I have stock power in the car, so it's not gonna overpower anything and I have a, I have a lot of tire for what I'm working with. So it's, it's for me, right now, it's perfectly balanced and I can't wait to see what it's gonna do on July 30th at New York Safety Track. But again, like I said before, I don't wanna just do these install videos and just, oh, it, do, it does great on the street. I wanna actually show you guys my personal experience while I'm tracking the car for two reasons. A, I think you get a better, more in-depth detailed review of how things are if you're gonna do these parts modifications yourself. And B, maybe it'll get you guys to get back out there or get out there for the first time and get on a track. Really can't recommend it enough. So thank you guys very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.